Let's make a lacquer material for our objects in this materials box. I'm going to select all the material samples that I want to apply the lacquer to and open up my material editor. And I already have a material here called lacquer. I can see that this neutral material is what is currently applied to my selection. And I can tell that because of these notched white corners in the material. So the objects that are currently selected use this material. So I'm going to apply my lacquer by right clicking and assigning this material to the current selection. And let's double click our material preview slot here. My lacquer I'm thinking will be a deep red kind of burgundy color. So I'm going to go into my diffuse color, click on the color swatch and let's dial in a starting point of a deep red, meaning high in saturation, somewhat low in value. I'm not going to go too low because I want to be able to see some of the features while I'm developing this material. Lacquer is reflective. I will click on the reflection swatch and set that to bright. And I'm going to leave on the Fresnel reflection, which changes the amount of reflection based on the angle. And without Fresnel reflection, a full reflection is going to be mirror-like. And with Fresnel reflection, it's more natural for non-metal materials. So let's go ahead and render that scene. So I can see these two lights that I have in my scene very, very sharply reflected, and it doesn't yet look like lacquer to my eye. Maybe the highlights that are being pulled, the reflections being pulled around the edges of this beveled object, this beveled cylinder, begin to feel like um, lacquer, but the simplicity of the color and tonality and, and the sharpness of the reflection is um, not sophisticated enough to reflect a lacquer. So let's build on this material. For my glossiness, I'm going to first dial down my glossiness, lower it from 1 to maybe 0.94, and that's going to soften and defocus the reflection and highlights. And I'm going to also change my diffuse color. Instead of a single color, I'm going to add a map or a series of maps to develop a more hand-finished color that has variations to it. And I can either click in this box to add a map, or if I have my inputs selected or inputs visible, I can click and drag out from my diffuse to build a chain of maps that are going to affect this. And I think what I want is first a general mix map. And I am going to take a red color similar to our starting color and a red color for color two that is much deeper and a bit lower in saturation, almost a black color. And I'm going to mix these using not a percentage. So if I were to go 100%, this map is going to push out the darker color, color two. And I can see that reflected in my sample. And if I were to choose 0%, it's going to pick this brighter color. But rather, what I want to do is I want that mix amount to vary. And I'm going to use a fall off map for that. So I'm attaching a general fall off map. And the default of perpendicular parallel or Fresnel is a little bit more extreme of a, of a value here. Perpendicular and parallel is going to change the color of this map based on its direction. And so if I look at this, I'm getting dark colors around the edge of an object. So where the reflection is a very sharp glancing angle, where it's almost brushing off of the object, it's going to be whiter, which will then mean that this darker tone is used. And I can see that here around the edge of this object. And where the reflection is more sharply perpendicular to the object, it's going to be black, which is going to yield this white color. So I already have some variation in here. Let me go back to my render settings, and I'm going to increase my render resolution, but also pick only a region to render. In fact, not a region. I'm going to pick a crop to render. 
crop. A region will will show the entire frame buffer, but a crop is actually just going to size the frame buffer to my cropped area. And I am going to render, let's say, that crop region. And this will allow me to see in a little more detail what I'm getting at. So this is not bad. I'm beginning to get a bit of a darker tone around these, these edges here. So I like that. It feels like the the lacquer is performing differently depending on the angle, and I feel like somehow that's part of lacquer's how lacquer performs. However, this red is just too consistent. It doesn't feel as though it has been developed um, over time by layers of lacquer, where there'd be variation. So I think I need to add more variation to this. And then my highlights, um, this is subjective. I think they're still too sharp for me. And I see that at the edge of this sharp cylinder that's not camphored, I'm, I'm not getting any rounded highlight like I'm getting here on this camphored box. So let's see if we can't um, fix that. For the camphor, I'm going to use something called a bump map. And I'm going to drag out, and in V-Ray, I can apply a V-Ray edges texture. And if I choose a world width, let's say 1 16th of an inch, and my radius 1 16th of an inch. I wonder if my units set up. Uh, my units are set up to 1 8th of an inch, so I'm going to set those higher to 1 16th, 1 32nd. And that way, when I dial in 1 16th, it doesn't get rounded up. It was getting rounded because it's smaller than the accuracy of this session of Studio Max. And so now I have two thirty seconds, which is the same as one sixteenth. And what this is going to do is when I render, you'll see um, objects that are not rounded, and it's a little challenging to see here, but I can begin to see it, get an illusion of a rounded one sixteenth edge. So it's going to pretend, create the illusion of camphering objects that don't actually have a camphor on them. And that will be really helpful with my lacquer. Let's go back and change this um, color of my mix map. Instead of coming in from a pure red, let's say color one is going to be a, maybe it's going to be a noise. And I'm going to go back to my mix map, map right click and copy my red and go to my noise. And I'm going to paste my red into both of these channels. And then I'm going to make one of these a little different, a little darker. And if I double click on the noise swatch, you can see that I'm getting kind of a, a variation depending upon my type of noise. Let's make this a little more exaggerated by darkening my dark color. I'm getting a random mathematical noise that has different characteristics depending on the noise type. And the noise size is the size of the pattern. And then the high and low is how clamped is my high point or my low point. And you can think of this as contrast. How contrasty is this? If I scale up my size and I bring high and low closer together, it will be an extremely high contrast um, pattern. And if I pull these further apart from each other, it will be a lower contrast pattern. And I don't think, in my mind, of the lacquer I'm thinking about having very, very hard edges to the changes in tone. It has softer edges. So I'm quite pleased with my um, high of, let's round that up to 0.8, and my low of 0.2. And now I should, if I change this and make this a little bit brighter, when I render, I should see some variation in that top color. Um, and it's going to be subtle. I can't really see it yet. I'm not sure if I'm seeing it, so I'm going to make this very dramatic. I'm going to make this black and red, and I'm wondering if my size is too large. So let's set the size down to one-fifth and render. Uh, I can begin to see it here. The size is still very large. Let's bring it down to 0.5 and render. There we go. 
it's not looking great, but I can see this. So I can begin to now react to what I'm seeing. And I think I want it to be significantly larger. And it also feels a bit simple being just two tones. So let's see if we can't come up with a, a method of adding in a few more tones and making them more subtle. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to insert a new node inside this branch, and I'm going to bring it in from my maps general, and I'm going to make a composite node, and I'm going to insert this um, into layer one. So what I have in my composite is this noise is now going into one layer of a composite node. And I'm going to make two layers so I can add some complexity and composite together two different noises to create more variation in tone. So in my composite node, I'm going to add a new layer. And I think I will select my noise, copy, oops, copy, paste, paste a copy. Nope. I just did something that I didn't want to do, right? I duplicated my objects. So let me shift drag my noise that made my copy and put that into layer two. Now I, I need these two noises to be different. So I'm going to make this noise at 2.5 and I'm going to make my red a little bit more orange and my dark color in a deep red. And I'm going to go back to my original noise and set this size to 1.6 and make my dark color not black, but something like this. So I have two similar but slightly different noises, and they're being fed into a composite. And I think I'm going to have layer two simply have a 50% opacity to blend with layer one. And all of that comes into the mix map. And then all of that goes into the top level of this color. So let's see what we get now. Ooh, that's nice. It is subtle, but I'm seeing the tone is not consistent. There, there are layers of color happening in here. And I'm not sure how well this will show up in the video, but this tone is very softly blending between a few different colors rather than just being that initial red. I think I would like the, the highlight to also have some sense of layered finishes to it. And the way I'm going to do that is instead of using simply one amount of reflection and one glossiness, I am going to use some maps, maybe a noise map, maybe. Let's copy all of these by selecting them and holding shift down and dragging. And I'm going to make this noise map white and black, excuse me, white and black. So a very extreme version of that noise. And this noise, let's say, saturation zero value, light gray, saturation zero, zero value, dark gray, and composite these together. And what I'm getting now, if I double click this composite and, and look in, it is layering together these two noises that are just kind of grayscale noises. So it's creating a kind of complex um, set of noises. And I'm going to put that into my reflection and I'm going to put that into my glossiness. And let's look back at our lacquer. Now, it's hard to see. We can see the M's here for maps. I can see that a map is coming into diffuse and a map is coming into reflection and glossiness. If I go down to my maps section of my material, I can also see here how they're coming in. And if I look at this, material, my glossiness has gone from fairly sharp to completely um, mixed and not sharp at all. And that's because I have these light and dark colors. So glossiness is varying between maybe 
0.8 and 0.5, there's a heavy influence from this map. And if I render, I'll be able to see this in action. It's changed dramatically the highlights. So I don't want this to change quite so much. I'm going to take the amount of my glossiness being influenced from this map, and instead of 100%, I'm going to say I only want maybe 10% to be um, to be altered. So it's mostly the same glossiness as before, but 10% of that glossiness is changing. And if I were now to let this render, I should see some areas are a little bit sharper and some areas are a little bit softer the way that a hand rubbed um, lacquer may have variation in tone. And then I'm also going to take the amount of reflection and instead of having this entirely controlled by the maps I brought in, I'm going to say maybe 25% is going to be controlled by that. And I'm going to pause the video now and let this frame render at high res and then I'll come back in and we'll look at it um, and we can kind of see the outcomes of this materiality. Okay, so I'm back and I let this render not for a terribly long time, but we can see the surface re resolved a little bit better here. And what I'm noticing is even though my highlights are still rather noisy because of the render time, I'm getting a slightly wider highlight here than right here. Um, and that is because of these maps that I was adding to change the amount of glossiness and reflectivity. And I can also see it happening a little sharper in this area, a little softer here, a little sharper there. And when I look at that variation in color, it's subjective. It might feel still a bit strong, but depending on what we're going for, this um, at least gets a point across that we can replace our diffuse color um, with a more complex set of, in this case, noise maps that are composited together. And we can take this much further and layer more in, um, but we can see how we're getting a very subtle kind of variation in color. Now, be aware that every time we have a complex network of maps, it's going to slow down my render slightly. When this surface here is being sampled for color, it doesn't simply return one diffuse color. It evaluates at this point in time what are the values of two noises that are then composited together, so that's a third operation, that are then brought into a mix map to combine two colors instead of just being a single um, execution. So while we're getting some nuance in character and in tone, there is a trade-off in the time to execute each of these materials or shaders every time a pixel is hit on the object. So that's a uh, lacquer material in our materials tray in 3ds Max 2023 and V-Ray.